This week on The Rutledge Perspective, we're talking about debilitating beliefs. And I want to start by telling you a story, the story of yes. And this is about a woman who said yes to everything, just about. When something didn't feel right and an opportunity came up, she said yes. When that opportunity started to not quite feel right, something else came up, she said yes. In looking back at the pattern, what the woman began to realize is even though things didn't feel right, every time she really got to the point where she was ready to just chunk it all and do something else, an opportunity showed up. And even if she didn't know how it was going to work or what was going to happen, she just said yes. And through all of those yeses came lifelong friendships, came amazing mentors, came really big battle scars, but also incredible experiences that built her toolbox to enable her to continue along the way. And she kept saying yes. And then one day she got to a position where she was continuing to build teams and assist people and make sure incredible things happen and do great projects and all of these kind of things But she was also in conflict every day and fighting every day and trying to make sure people's words and actions aligned every single day. And she woke up one morning, looked at her family, it was over the holidays, and realized, hmm, I haven't really been present. I haven't really been spending the kind of time I wanted to spend with these people. I haven't been giving everything that I am to the people that mean the most to me but I sure have been giving it to all these other people. And she wasn't angry. She wasn't upset. She was just done. And there was a certain level of peace in that doneness that the woman decided, well, this is probably the right thing to do. I don't know what's going to happen next, but this is no longer going to happen. I'm just going to call it quits on this thing. And so she did. And as she began to move into the next thing, it was with this vim and vigor and hustle and excitement and extreme naivete at how much and how heavy all of the trauma and all the craziness and all the microaggressions and all the madness had been for years, decades even. It was not until she got quiet, until she was at a position where she was just relying on herself when Her circle was still her really great circle, but there was much more time where it was just her. In those moments of complete solitude, complete silence, is where all of that noise started to crop up. Wait a minute, where did all of my energy go? Wait, I I was working crazy hours for someone else. Why am I having such a hard time gathering up the energy to work for me? Wait, I... I, I, I don't understand, right? All that noise started to come up when she got quiet. And because it was noisy and she was driven, she started listening to what was cutting through the noise. And what was cutting through the noise was, well, you know what? This is your expertise. You should do that. People really need you, so you should do that. And because that played into that need for service, that desire, that true desire to live into a purpose of service, All of those things that other people said were her zone of genius became her thing. The thing to do, the thing to wrap her soul around, the thing to wrap her energy around. And yet, those little tapes kept starting playing. Man, I don't want to do this. Man, is it Monday morning again? I just have no energy. Do I have to get that done again? The procrastination, the fatigue, all of those things that had been around for decades showed up again. But why? Why did they show up? They showed up because in that desire to just do the thing, to be away from the pain, because that what that's often what gives us the first impetus to action. It was moving into habit, not having taken the time for her to really sit and rest and recover and examine and decide, purposefully decide what the next thing was going to be. Because see, the habit she had 
was you just go. You just do what you're supposed to do. You just show up. You just keep showing up. It'll be fine. You just make it happen. You just keep showing up. But that habit doesn't allow space for contemplation, space for discernment. All of the things she told everybody else to do. The woman didn't have time to do that for herself. But the universe will find ways to slow you down. The universe will find ways to make you experience so much disconnect, so much discord, so much pain that you have to do something different. And that's what happened to her. One day she just woke up and said, this doesn't make any sense either. Let's stop and regroup. We're not going to go into that dorsal that, you know what, this just isn't going to work. I'm giving up. Although she had those moments. But she really sat and contemplated and started to listen and not listen here, but listen here. What was her soul saying? What was she being led to do? What was the spirit saying? What were all the people that she engaged in saying to her that aligned with what her what her heart was telling her? And then she was able to surrender. And when she did that, things started to align. And what's weird is that this woman is a woman who believes that when you are in your purpose, things come to you when they're supposed to. If you pay attention, the things you need will come. You will see the signs because she does not read signs. But if you're paying attention, you'll see them. And that woman is me, if you haven't guessed by now. And what has come to to pass, and the reason I wanted to talk about this today, and we're talking about those limiting beliefs, right, that head trash, is that often when we are trying to get away from really painful situations, things that we, you know, jobs that we hate, careers that we hate, bosses that we hate, whatever it is that is just making us crazy, we will jump immediately into something that feels like it's gonna be better. But if we haven't taken the time to really get still, be discerning, to think, to plan, to know who we are, where we are, what we want, and how we're going to get there, we'll be right back in that same frying pan that we were before. It's the boiling frog, right? We got out of that one boiling pot, but we jumped right back into another one. And right now we don't know it's boiling because it just feels warm. And they're just kind of turning up the heat just a little bit at a time. So the next thing you know, we're going to be a boiled frog right back in the same space. And that's those limiting beliefs, that idea that this is just what it's supposed to be. Because when we take the time and do the work and really get still and really discern, some truths can come up that we were not expecting. Today I said on the radio show, sometimes speaking truth to power is speaking truth to yourself. What is it that you really want? What are those skills and activities that you have and actions that you take that are incredibly and uniquely you? What is your genius? And own that. It's not about arrogance. It is really understanding where you can serve best because being a leader is about serving other people. Where can you serve best? But in order to get to that, you got to get through all of this, all of this madness, all of this craziness, all of this noise that's telling you who you should be, what you should do, where you should go, what job you should have, how fast you should move up the ladder, how much money you should be making, what kind of car you should drive, what kind of house you should, all that stuff, that noise that gets in the way of real purpose. Because the reality is when you're sitting in your purpose and you're doing the thing that you're really being led to do, when you're in that zone and you're in it because it's about service and it's about purpose and it's about making an impact, all that other stuff comes. All that other stuff comes because what is meant to be for you is is for you. And when you're in it, it just multiplies, right? It expands. It gives opportunity for other things to come your way. But in order for you to get to that, you have to get still. You have to understand, hear and understand your own head trash. You got to speak truth to you. You got to know that sometimes that truth is not that you don't trust everything else that's going on. What you really don't trust is your own skill, your own capability, your own heart, your own discernment, because you've let the noise and the experiences of the past tell you that you can't trust you. Lisa Nichols says, you know, you don't bet on the horse, you bet on the jockey, and I'm gonna bet on me all day long. 
Do you really bet on you? Are you really, really putting your bet on yourself? Especially if you are looking to be an entrepreneur, you got to be willing to bet on you. You've got to know without a shadow of a doubt that you are where you're supposed to be doing what you're supposed to do. And you have the skills to make it happen. Even in those moments where you have some self doubt, cause we all have that you fundamentally know this is it. And I know this is a moment. This is just a space and time and it is still going to happen. And I've taken this detour, but I know the end goal. If you are moving up in your career, you've got your eyes set on a particular role. Do you trust yourself enough to be honest about your own stuff? Is that really the role for you? Is that really the place you need to be? Is that really where your genius is? And why do you want that role? Do you want that role because you can make an impact because you get a chance to learn and grow and develop and therefore do the same for others? Or is it just prestige and title? Because you can go after that too and you can easily get that, but that stuff is fleeting. That stuff is fleeting. Like in professional services, the saying is, what have you sold for me lately? You're only as good as your last client sale. So if you're all tied up in the thing, in the title, in the money, in the house, in the career, in the school, in the degree, if you're all tied up in that stuff, when it goes away, the only thing left is you. And do you know you? And do you trust you? I'm here to tell you, that is some important work to do. When you realize that the trust you need is the trust in you, and when you trust in you, then you can be much more discerning and understanding about who and who you cannot trust outside of that. Those people that are in your life for a reason, a season or a lifetime, understanding who those lifetime folks are and being ready for those reason and season people. Being really clear on where you're going so that any of those things that get in your way become merely detours, not derailers. All of these things you've heard me say before, but it really comes down to managing that stuff that's in your head. What is that head trash? What are those debilitating thoughts? What are those limiting beliefs that are keeping you from getting where you want to be? One day I will share a lot of, a lot more of mine because I think there's probably some learning in that and learning in that story, because we all have a story that may really be the thing that someone else needs to hear that they can relate to. But today, what I'm asking you to do is to do the work, pick up a journal, pick up a coloring book, pick up something, pick up your crochet needles, right? And yarn, something that's going to occupy your hands so you can let your brain rest and be still in that moment, be present in that moment, do the work to get to what that disconnect is. What is that restlessness? Why doesn't this feel right? And be honest with yourself about what that why is, and then decide to take action. It's hard work. Working on self is hard work because nobody can do it for you. But it is probably some of the most rewarding work besides helping others that you can ever do. So don't let those limiting beliefs, those debilitating thoughts, keep you from getting into your genius, keep you from giving the world everything you could possibly give it, from leaving it a better place for you having been here. Don't let the noise stop you. Don't let the fear and the uncertainty and all this madness that we're all experiencing right now stop you from figuring out where you can contribute and how you can be the best you and the best unique you that the world needs to see so that the people who need you can find you. I thank you again for showing up and for being a part of the Rutledge Perspective because you are, if you are listening, if you are watching, if you are tuning in, if you're downloading, if you're doing any of that stuff, you are part of the village. And I appreciate you and I appreciate your showing up. And I appreciate you doing this work with me because the thing is, those of us who help others also need guidance and coaching ourselves. You know, they say physician heal thyself. Every therapist needs a therapist, right? Every coach needs a coach. None of us gets through this life alone, but we definitely don't get through it if we're not able to hear, recognize those limiting beliefs, become aware of them. So then we, we, then we can move to action. Have a fantastic week. Thank you for tuning in. I appreciate your being here and we'll catch you next time. Bye.
You've been watching The Rutledge Perspective. Thank you for tuning in. If we have given you a different perspective or if you've learned something new that you hadn't thought about before, please subscribe to The Rutledge Perspective podcast where you get your favorite podcasts and give us a like on iTunes or Google Play or Stitcher. We really appreciate it. And your feedback is important as well as we use that to inform our next episodes. You can also head over to my website, laurelrutledge.com, and download a freebie called Where's My Mojo that can really help you get out of your rut or maybe talk you back off that ledge of frustration. You can also find previous episodes of The Rutledge Perspective on laurelrutledge.com. I really appreciate your tuning in. Thank you so much, and we'll see you next time.